Okay, so we'll start the session. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. My name is Vikas Agrawal. I'm the founder of AIF and PMS Experts India. So it's a special day again because we've invited Mr. Nimesh Mehta from ASK Investment Managers. Uh, well, Nimesh brings about almost two decades of experience on the table. He's, he's, a, he's a CFP uh, and he's also the best way to introduce uh, Nimesh would be he's an author of a book called Sales Booster. So I have read this book two or three times in my life and that really helped me to sharpen my skill set in terms of selling skills. So thank you so much, Nimesh, for uh, authoring this book and contributing more to the society as a whole. Uh, so uh, uh, ever since, uh, just to introduce uh, uh, further Nimesh, so ever since he has taken over as head of sales and a country head for uh, ASK Investment Managers, under his able guidance, AMC has grown many folds. I remember when he took over in 2013. In fact, I had a chance to work with him for a very, very brief time. Uh, at Motila Loswal. So before joining ASK, he used to work with uh, Motila Loswal and spent almost a decade. He was the first employee of, of the MC at Motila Loswal and then he moved on to ASK Investment Managers. And uh, uh, he has been not only instrumental in terms of uh, uh, developing the products for, uh, for ASK, but at the same time, he is also uh, heading the sales team uh, and, uh, uh, and building up the AUM. So, uh, you know, one of the things which, uh, which I remember, so uh, I think ASK is one of the oldest and most respected fund house in India. And uh, initially, I remember this was 2010 times when, when there were very hardly very, very few players in the PMS industry. And ASK has played very, very important role in terms of a building up this uh, industry, PMS industry and, and nurturing it uh, over a period of time along with one or two large players. So I think uh, the, the contribution from their side in terms of developing this industry has played very, very important role. So uh, a lot of good work is done by them. So I take this opportunity to congratulate them. And uh, today they happen to be one of the largest portfolio managers of, of India, managing about almost 28,000 crores of domestic funds. And I think a similar amount of money uh, as an offshore fund as well. Uh, so we, today we'll talk to him and understand more from him in terms of you know what is their house views. A, B is we also try and understand that you know how do they manage funds and how do they manage to deliver uh, more than twenty percent kind of returns for for almost 10, 11 uh, years of long long period of time. So let me just take a minute quickly to introduce ASK Investment Manager. So in ASK Investment Manager is one of the oldest and the largest portfolio management companies in India. They follow similar focus on listed equities. They are purely a discretionary investment manager and they focus on mindset alignment and philosophy, which matches during the client selection. So this is very, very, that's very, very important. Uh, so in terms of uh, the philosophy of ASK, uh, they, there are two, three things that I want to highlight about them is they always believe in a greater certainty of earnings versus a mere quantum of earning growth. They always look at superior and consistent quality of earnings versus a mere quantum of you know earning growth. And they always focus on high quality at a reasonable price uh, versus inferior quality at an arithmetically cheap price. So they don't essentially look at cheap valuations and they don't end up buying cheap companies. So their, their stock selection process is absolutely unique. In fact, they were the first one to start in these lines and uh, as we speak today, they are one of the largest uh, portfolio managers. So their approach is very, very clear that they strongly believe that pricing the value rather than valuing the price. I mean, the second thing is that discipline investing into outstanding businesses. And they believe in building a portfolio of compounding opportunities or companies which can continue to come, uh, come, uh, compound over a period of uh, you know next year, 10, 20, 30 years. And they always believe in buying growth businesses at a value price. So essentially, they follow GARP uh, investment philosophy, which is growth at a, at a reasonable price. Uh, so one of the things which they, I mean, what I have observed is uh, they follow very, very strong discipline uh, at an investment level, investment team level. Uh, they follow the philosophy and the selection process very, very religiously and rigorously. Uh, they have a very strong in-house uh, proprietary based research framework which was developed by uh, Mr. Bharat Bhai and uh, they have a great team bandwidth experience so team is headed by Mr. Pratik Agrawal. Uh, they, 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 they also in fact have a very very strong relationship with 
some of the large corporates so they get to know in and out about what's happening uh, in the industry and what's happening in and around the companies and they have a comprehensive understanding of indian businesses and industry because they have almost uh, three decades of experience mr bharat bhai has more than three decades of experience uh, in terms of investing uh, one of the rarest brain i would say or best brain for equities in india and they focus on long term performance track record they they don't look at uh, short term at all so uh, over to you nimesh all right so uh, uh, nimesh thank you so much for accepting our request and agreeing to come on the show so uh, you know uh, there were a lot of requests from most of the investors and they wanted to you know uh, interact with your fund house and wanted to know more about your investment philosophy etc so thank you so much once again uh, for joining the call now uh, my pleasure and i must say uh, that congratulations to you for doing an excellent job uh, in taking this lead to educate your investors and other investors in general i also want to congratulate you uh, and your team for what i recently read is that you completed about a uh, 100 client base reaching 100 client base. and i think uh, i saw on the youtube that you have now crossed about 1000 subscribers on youtube channel yeah yeah i think congratulations to you and team for doing a great job here thank you nimesh thank you so nimesh ever since you joined uh, and taken over as head of sales and product at ask uh, uh, what we what we saw is that there has been huge amount of uh, uh, growth in terms of overall aum and organization has also grown many folds so can you share your experience uh, working with ask for about 7 and 1/2 8 years now uh, yeah i am actually very proud to share that in the last 7 and 1/2 years Uh, our domestic equity AUM has moved from 800 odd crores to 28,000 crores, uh, and overall equity AUM has moved from 1,400 crores to 31,500 or 600 crores as of yesterday. Uh, I must say this is an achievement for the entire ASKM team, and I cannot take any credit uh, for this uh, uh, success. In hindsight, actually, when I reflect on the journey, uh, I believe ASKM was an idea. or uh, a company whose time had come and i was only a catalyst there and where i feel i was lucky to join ASKM in Jan- in december 2013 because uh, you know all the good and hard work was done uh, by uh, prateek agarwal by the investment team and all my predecessors i can tell you the reason why i joined all the reasons that i joined uh, ASKM was because of the group had great trust uh, in the industry which they had built over the last uh, you know 25 30 years and i believe trust is the single biggest differentiating factor in the 21st century selling relationships everywhere across there and i uh, 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 i mentioned in my book also uh, and sales booster that if there is no trust there is no sale there is no relationship in particularly in the financial services uh, industries business the second reason uh, uh, for me joining was that ASKIM had the right uh, you know uh, equity pms products and a very good investment track record so all i can say i did was i packaged and uh, you know represented the entire ask proposition uh, to to the investor segment and the distributor segment as the uh, uh, five p's of ask pms uh and i don't know if we get time uh, in this uh, talk and i would really like to touch upon this five p's uh, of uh, pms uh, because it will help all your investors to not only evaluate ask but also to uh, overall look at the uh, the other evaluation of pms manager uh, apart from this five p's all i can say is that we as a team were very focused on uh, a uh, which segment we wanted to work investor segment to work and what distributor partners we wanted to work you will be surprised and you been on the uh, amc side uh, but for the first 6 7 years we only worked with 30 odd distributors pan india and that's how in terms of growth and uh, uh, why have been successful because we were very very focused on executing our strategies very very well uh, and i mentioned another thing that uh, uh, which worked in our favor is that we knew what we should not be doing and i must mention here that knowing what you should not do is very critical in the long term success of any organization yeah great so somebody rightly said for not doing anything you need more skills than to really keep on buying and selling stocks so great uh, uh, nibesh one personal question before we come to the topic 
you know in your personal life and i've seen that since i happen to know you personally as well you follow swami parthasarthi uh, uh, in your life a lot so first of all the, there are two questions to this so one is what made you to follow him a and what kind of role that he has played in your life uh, if you could share some lights on that uh, you you touched a very uh, subject very close to my heart and i can speak for hours and hours uh, about this but uh, i'll take the second question first which you spoke about so um, uh, over time i you know i was inquiring myself as to what makes a human being happy why is it that i'm agitated why is it that i get angry again and again uh, what is the real meaning of life what is ha- true happiness etc and i was just inquiring inquiring about all of this and i ended up uh, being you know picking up swami's book listening to one of his lectures and uh, since then i think my life uh, has completely completely altered uh, and uh, as i mentioned to you i can speak for hours and hours but maybe uh, i will touch upon a few things uh, where how learning spirituality and the swami parthasarthi has transformed my life so few things on the professional side first in uh, you know, a thing that in uh, you know, happened to me at swami ji help me bring clarity in life okay i realize that i am the architect of my fortune and i am also the architect of my misfortune everything that has happened today in my life is a function of the decision which i took and the decisions uh, i did not take that's why today so i am and only i am responsible for uh, everything that's happening in my life and prior to this what i used to do is to i used to always you know have blame situations uh, blame people uh, in my office or in any area where things don't go right for me and uh, i think that's big is a change let me give a uh, you know very uh, different example relevant example for all of us which we all have faced in the last 15 17 months which is a pandemic hit us now how do i apply i am responsible now uh, i hardly read newspapers but whenever i pick up something there's always a constant you know a uh, complaint from everyone that state government should have done this the you know central government should done this this is not right health and children right what are we doing there we are passing on the blame to a third party outside and doing that and what is in your control that i am responsible now when you say i am responsible what am i supposed to do i am not supposed to travel outside my house unless it is very very important uh and uh, that is what i must say that for i would say march 2020 we hit i think october november till that then we almost have not stepped out of the house uh that is what responsible there and if i stepped out for this thing with a mask and with in terms of the you know not crowded areas and keeping a distance out there so here is where i think you know that spirituality helps not just in a professional environment in a personal environment to become responsible for your own thing uh if i were to pick up a second thing then you know i uh, you know learn to uh, uh, accept and respect people with different divergent views um uh, i was one person uh, in the past uh, who would uh, uh, you know start to ridicule a person or reject a person if he does not accept or confirm my view you know he, he has to have in terms of a similar uh, view than i am and what that happened is there it led me to a continuous in terms of agitations and uh, uh, challenges in my mind because day in and day uh, day in and day out because of different sets of people we work in office you have you know a views which are different so i used to always have arguments uh, and then mental agitation manner this which did allow me to sleep well out there and i understood from spirituality that it is very difficult to change my own self okay For, and i was trying to ch- change somebody else okay uh, and uh, that one thing helped me to uh, you know understand people respect other people better and if i would just pick up another uh, last point uh, to the conversation uh, the spiritual knowledge actually uh, you know humbles you uh, helps you drop your ego and i must say i must confess that i had uh, you know very high amount of ego because i look back i used to always portray and tell people in life that i am the doer i am the achiever uh, uh and i probably i am the success uh, behind uh, ask or so on and so forth but that's not true at all it's a complete complete dream work uh, and because i had so thick fat ego or uh, doing that i used to hardly listen to my team members i hardly in terms of it interact be open uh, to our customers to our investors to everybody across there uh, 
uh, because I always was trying to you know prove myself right uh, and justify my behavior out there. Uh, today, as a leader, I realize that even as a leader, I end up doing you know uh, many mistakes in life. But one thing which in a spiritual talk is to you know say thank you or say sorry to. And uh, I remember uh, obviously again pre-pandemic day, I said a sorry to a pantry person. Uh, because he was a human being ultimately, and I don't need to have an ego that you know. Uh, 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 if I told him something, I don't need to say across there. So I would say uh, this spirituality has helped me uh, uh, become uh, humble, uh, less ego has helped me uh, become a good listener, a better listener, and I would say I'm become much more team player than what I was earlier. Uh, again, I realized that I actually uh, go into the flow. I, I don't come back, so I would just like to stop here. Uh, and uh, you know maybe uh, look forward because you know we'll have a lot of time. Uh, sure, sure. So one of the things which I learned is that instead of looking outside and start blaming the situations, one should introspect within himself or herself and find a solution uh, instead of just blaming uh, the entire world. So all solutions are in, uh, internal again, uh, Vikas. Because I tell you, it's not about what you do, but how you do and how you relate with people. How you relate with situation? The example I told you about COVID. How you relate to COVID? How you relate to your boss? How you relate to your friends? And therefore, it's all intrinsic rather than more outside. And you hit it uh, in terms of the nail uh, sharply that uh, you want to start within rather than look outside. Uh, okay, great. So uh, now coming back to topic, uh, Nimesh. Uh, so there are a lot of investors who have joined in, and all of them are curious to know. Uh, is that if you look at the track record of ASK, they, you know, you're one of the oldest uh, portfolio management companies in India, uh, early one to start, early one to nurture the industry, played very, very important role in terms of contributing and nurturing this PMS industry to this extent. And you are one of the largest. But one thing which we are witnessing and investor community as a whole is witnessing that you have been very, very consistent in terms of delivering the deliverables in the hand of investors to an extent that one of your largest portfolio IP ended up delivering more than 20% kind of CAGR for 11 long years. So uh, is it possible to replicate the same in the decades to come in? Can you throw some more lights over there? Uh, I'm not sure about replication, uh, but I must uh, say this is my... Uh, you know, a time to thank our investment team uh, because it is they who truly deserve, uh, you know, the Bharat Bhai Pratik and the entire team for being able to consistently deliver, uh, you know, you mentioned about IP uh, as delivering uh, 20% in the last decade. But it is, uh, you know, the growth portfolio, which we run it for, I don't know whether you know it, it's the oldest PMS strategy probably in the country uh, that completed two decades or 20 years in Jan 2021. And that portfolio has delivered 20.5% compounded returns after fees, whereas market has delivered about 13% for them. So from an investor point of view, and I'll put it simple in a layman's term, uh, a crore invested in Jan 2001 in growth portfolio is today 45.7 crores versus roughly about 12 crores uh, into Nifty. Uh, and uh, so you asked about what has been the reason. I, I, I very clearly would like to refrain from saying that I don't know about we can replicate, but I can talk about the past, uh, is that I believe our performance success can be attributed to maybe four or five things that comes to my mind. I think first is self-discipline to buy quality and only quality stocks. You know, there has never been deviation uh, to that. Second, in terms of, uh, again, uh, not deviating from the core philosophy process and the product uh, you know, objective. Uh, that's very, very critical and not divert at all. That takes me to the third part, which says that uh, not getting, di uh, you know, digressed or carried away by the kind of, uh, you know, sectors, uh, by the kind of fashionable trends or the market trends. You know, we always have been, you know, very boring kind of investor and stay true there. Fourth, uh, that comes to my mind is we have been uh, known in the country for a bottom of stock selection. And we've never been top down, which means that we never had the compulsion to try and, uh, you know, buy uh, uh, what are they in the index. So we mimic that index and all that. We have never been in terms of focused on trying to buy small, mid or large because we are always a market cap agnostic, uh, you know, portfolio. All our studies are, uh, you know, multi-cap or flexi-cap funds uh, and they may have a bias, but we never focus on uh, market caps. And lastly, uh, I would say the fifth reason 
to my mind is that uh, ASK, and I've been uh, part of the industry for long, ASK as an organization, uh, as a portfolio manager house, has committed far lesser mistakes than in many other people. I am learning to leave them others outside. But when you co- commit less mistakes, uh, you uh, tend to lose less money and therefore you are more consistent uh, in a longer period of time. Uh, and what, you know, uh, the wisdom of the board helped in terms of, you know, we, we uh, had a very low churn in the portfolio and I must attribute holding the horses or holding the good quality companies like Asian Paints for a decade. Uh, we've been holding PI Industries for a decade, Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finso, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Holding it for a long period of time and as a package all put together is, I think, I believe that uh, we've been able to uh, deliver a great consistent uh, performance for a long period of time. You ask for the future, but or I cannot predict the future, but I can say that as an organization, we will follow what I said right now. And that's uh, something which ASCAM is known for in the country. All right, Nimesh, uh, the other question is, uh, so what is your investment mantra? What is the investment philosophy which is followed by your investment team? And I know for the fact that your organization is the first one to talk about investment philosophy and you all follow this very, very religiously and vigorously. So can you throw some more lights uh, on your investment philosophy? So Vika, I asked you in the first answer which I spoke about, I requested you that if I'll get time, I'll talk about the five P's of ASKPMS. Uh, is that okay if I speak uh, a little bit in detail out here? Uh, if that your time? Uh, please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, why I want to share about this 5P is because, you know, it's not about ASKPM. I'm representing ASKPMS. But each of your uh, you know, investor, whenever they evaluate any portfolio manager, they should probably look at uh, in terms of uh, evaluating on this 5Ps. And uh, today is my, I'm just representing to you the 5Ps, which I believe one should look into. The first feat to my mind is the people. Now, people are uh, one of the differentiating factors in almost any industry. But, you know, people are the only differentiating factor in our investment industry. Uh, the outcome of our investments, the success of our performance in the long run is a directly proportional to the experience, knowledge, wisdom uh, of the people who are managing it. And I believe, uh, in particularly in equities, experience is the best teacher. So you should always try and select people or the managers who have seen, you know, at least a multi-decade cycles, at least, you know, 20, I mean, as long as possible you can. And here is where, uh, you know, uh, we are very happy to share that uh, Bharat Bhai is the only, uh, Mr. Bharat Shah, ED of ASC Group, is the only uh, uh, investment manager who has managed uh, directly or overlooked public equities for the last 31 years. And I would say that's a great, great uh, advantage we at ASK have. The second is, now I'm coming to the philosophy which you spoke about, uh, and that's uh, very, very critical uh, uh, for uh, all of our investors to understand. With the right people comes in a very time-tested and a very simple or a straightforward philosophy. Uh, Our investment policy uh, philosophy should generally not be very complicated. Uh, our investment philosophy is uh, based on two uh, uh, objectives. First objective is capital preservation, and second objective is capital appreciation, and in that order. Uh, I must uh, proudly say that we are the only manager, equity man in the country, whom I know, who has put capital preservation as one of the objectives in our offer document, in the presentations, or whatever you will see. Whenever you will see any presentation, IP or EOP, you will always see that there is a capital preservation objective out there. Now, within the philosophy, uh, there are five investment attributes which I would want to uh, you know, cover. Uh, and if you're an uh, investor, then you can just keep attention for the you know, next you know, five, 10 minutes time. I think something uh, I can share, which I've learned, will, will change the way you look at equity investments. The first attribute is the size of opportunity. Uh, generally, when I meet clients, I have this habit to ask investors that, uh, what kind of uh, uh, market segment to do well, mid cap will do well, large cap will do well. And different points in time, different customers say, but nine of the 10 times, customer tells me that small and mid cap will uh, tend to do well. To that, naturally, I ask them the question that, you know, which is the bank that comes to your mind has created a lot of wealth in the last 10, 15 years' time? But everybody then answers HDFC Bank or Kotak Mahindra Bank, etc. If I ask that which IT company has created the longest period of wealth, then the answer comes in TCS Infosys of the world. Then I ask them paints and they say Asian paints or something like that. 
Now, you know, I don't, uh, you know, contradict them for, and uh, because all the answers which the client gave has been that other large caps. And neither I'm saying that large caps or you know, mid caps will not do well. But the point I'm trying to highlight here is that market is, is not agnostic to whether you are small, mid or large. Market is always focused on the quality or lack of quality. Uh, and therefore, I always, in, in terms of tell people when I meet across there, that it is not about how big the company was in the past or how big the company is today. Because that is actually rare view mirror, drive, uh, rare view mirror driving. What is important to see is how big the company can become in the future. And that to me is the you know, starting point or a fulcrum point of investment. And th therefore, we are always discussing about what is the size of the pond rather than the size of the fish. But every now and then you meet investors, the debate always goes on that which fish should I buy? And you know, I would want everybody to first uh, look, and it is we at ASK look is there, what is the size of opportunity? And within that, what we look in the, in the whole debate, which you know, Vikas and I in the future should have, is between uh, the quality of the investment and not so good quality investment, rather than whether you will buy a mid or small out there. The, the second part of the attribute is the capital efficiency. And here is where I'll bring, uh, I spoke about capital preservation. The capital preservation happens uh, in our portfolio uh, through because we focus on a very high capital efficiency. Well, what do you mean by capital uh, efficiency out here? Capital efficiency is the character of the business. Uh, uh, and it does not change with times. Some businesses which require capital will always require capital, and it does not even change with time. Now, where we measure the capital efficiency by the return on equity and return on debt both put together. For the benefit of all your investors, uh, let me uh, share some information. There are roughly about 6,000 odd companies listed uh, in India. And if we were to evaluate only 25% of uh, odd companies uh, in the country, I mean, ROC of the company, you know, you'll be surprised that only less than 7% Less than 7% of the company has an ROC. And this is uh, uh, leaving uh, uh, the BFSI sector because BFSI, we don't focus on the ROC, but they focus on ROE and ROA. But uh, in terms of uh, all the other companies, it's 25% and higher is only about 360 odd companies, which means our universe shrinks to almost 350 odd companies because we don't want to get there. And I want you know all of us to reflect, uh, you know, where is where we lost money in the equity markets. If you reflect, and you know, be honest enough, you realize that uh, capital destruction, you've lost your capital uh, in, in uh, companies like infrastructure, commodities, real estate, uh, construction, airlines, theater screens, uh, power sector firms, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Uh, and when we study about that, why? It's because, again, these businesses require more and more capital every single year. And they are starved of all this capital. And therefore, if you see the average uh, return on capital of all of these companies, is you know generally uh, in, is quite mediocre. Now I have highest regards for one of the companies called Larson and Tubro, um, but if you look at the last ten years ROC of Larson and Tubro is something about twelve point five percent. Okay, uh, and if you look at the returns of uh, Larson and Tubro on a ten year basis, it's somewhere closer to nine percent. And therefore, our endeavor is to always always focus on a very uh, high ROC companies uh, while we always uh, endeavor. To pick up, uh, you know, twenty percent or higher kind of ROC companies, I'm very, very happy and proud to share that our uh, most of our portfolios would have an upwards of thirty-five percent of ROC. And we mentioned about IP. You asked me a question. The previous uh, question was an IP. The ROC of the portfolio is about thirty-nine percent. That tells you that how much of uh, you know the quality of the portfolio we have. And that's one of the reasons, uh, so emphasis on this capital preservation or capital efficiency, that we don't have very volatility, high volatility uh, in our uh, returns. Now, uh, coming to in terms of uh, 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 the third part uh, attribute, uh, ROC only you know, uh, lets us understand that clients don't come to us to preserve the capital. Okay, but it is very, very important uh, because when the clients invest on their own, they end up buying something wrong and losing their capital rather than retaining. But uh, you know, uh, we as in the second objective we have to achieve of the uh, the philosophy is to capital growth. And when you say capital growth, uh, you know, we focus on the earnings growth of the company, uh, net of capital dilution. That's very important. How many times has the company come back to markets to raise more money? You know, most of the investment that you see in our portfolio, you'll see that after listing. 
uh, of the company, they would have rarely come back uh, to again raise further money. So we prefer to buy companies uh, or stocks which can deliver a consistent 12%, 15% or 17% of a earnings growth over a long period of time rather than try to buy companies which can, you know, uh, create in a 50, 100% growth one year and then, you know, negative 20% of the growth. That's not the end of year. Uh, I am reminded of, uh, you know, the quote from, uh, you know, the great Warren Buffett. It beautifully says, stock price is nothing but slaves of earnings power. Uh, and uh, I, I can't in terms of uh, relate to it because I've been measuring or tracking uh, equity markets for a long period of time. Uh, and we believe that, uh, Bharat has beautifully said that, uh, there's an umbilical cord relationship between the price of the company and the earnings growth of the com- uh, uh, company. In the 10 year, uh, in a five to 10 year period, price generally mimics or follows the earnings growth of the company. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, our IP portfolio over the last five years, PAT growth has been roughly about uh, 17% for the portfolio. And if you look at IP, the returns have been close to 15 and a half, 16%. So, you know, even uh, the price of IP has, you know, closely followed the underlying earning growth of the company. The two things we look into uh, the uh, earnings growth, uh, two words, very importantly, consistency and predictability. So we are happy to own the company in good or bad times, like in pandemic period of time also, if we can see that the company can deliver, you know, 12 to, uh, you know, 10, 12%, 15% on a continuous basis, we will hold on. And that is where we've been holding on to the Asian pains and PI industries of the company for a very, very long period of time. Now, I must mention that we are the only equity manager in the country who have documented capital preservation as our investment objective, not only in offer document, but all our presentation, when you see, you will see that. Now, there are five attributes uh, of in ASK's investment philosophy. And I promise that once anybody understands this, not only they will be able to manage their portfolios, but they'll be able to understand it far better. Uh, equity is far better. First is the size of opportunity. And in my experience, uh, you know, whenever I ask clients or investors, what do you think which segment will do well? At different points in time, some investors tell me small cap, some say large cap, some say uh, mid cap, and some say flexi cap. And then I ask them this question that what do you think in, in the last 10 years, which bank has created more wealth? And most of them say HDFC, Cotex of the world. If I ask them which paints industry has done well, paints, uh, paints have done well, they'll say Asian paints of the world. If I ask them what IT industry had done well, then they'll say Infosys and PC of the world. Now, I'm not saying at all that, that only large caps tend to do well. Uh, and therefore, what I'm trying to say is that market cap, market is agnostic to whether you're small, mid, or large. Okay. Uh, so it is not about the size of the fish. Now, the whole debate in the market when you talk to investor, the fish is nothing but the market cap. But the debate should be the size of the pond. Now, how big is the pond available? So it's not about how big the company was or what it is, because that's a rare view mirror. It's about how big the company can become in the future. It is the starting point or a fulcrum point of our investment. And therefore, the debate between all of us, whenever if we have the debate, should never be between uh, you know large, small, and mid, because that's an artificial debate. We should have a debate between the lack, uh, uh, the quality and the lack of it. And what is the quality which the market looks at that? The second attribute is a capital efficiency. Now, this is where uh, I say capital preservation comes to place because we believe capital preservation can happen if you buy into companies which have a high capital efficiency. Now, what do you mean by that? Because capital efficiency to us is a character of the company and the character of the business which generally does not change with time. We measure the capital efficiency by tracking the return on capital employed, not just the return on equity, but the return on debt also put together. Now, for the benefit of investors, again, there are roughly about 6,000 companies listed on uh, Indian markets. And if we were to choose in only 25% or higher ROC, then, uh, you know, there are only about 7%, less than 7% of the industry, which provides 25%. And why do I say we should have? Because there are, you know, uh, if you go back to history and reflect on our own investments, we realize that capital destruction has happened in, you know, sectors like infrastructure, commodities, construction, infrastructure, real estate, airlines, theater screens, power companies. Because most of these companies have, uh, you know, require a lot of capital to grow, and they need a consistently, you know, capital to uh, to keep growing their company, and therefore their ROC are mediocre. 
and people have destructed their money by investing because they have a return on capital of less than that. So we in our strategy, we say that the minimum of 20% or upwards of that to have ROC in the portfolio. While we endeavor to have 20 or 25% 25 IP, the actual built-in portfolio because of IP has 39% ROC. It tells you how high quality of the portfolio we try to build in there. The third attribute after the, and this allows to preserve capital. But remember, clients don't come to us to preserve capital. They can do themselves also. Uh, but you know how to grow the capital. Therefore, the third attribute is the earnings growth of the company. Uh, earnings of the company, net of capital dilution. Now, we prefer to buy companies which can do a relentless growth, earnings growth of 12, 15, 17, 18% over the decade. Trend to identify a company which does 50, 40% in one year and then maybe go down the second year. In the long run, as Buffett has said, stock prices are nothing but slaves of earnings power. And we have seen it, and I've seen it personally, in the longer run, uh, the price uh, almost follows the earnings growth over a decade, uh, decade's time. In the shorter term, it can go up and down, but in the longer term, is there. So within the earnings, we focus on two words, the consistency of earnings and predictable earnings. Can we see Asian pains can continuously deliver and predictably earnings in a good or bad times? And that's the reason we continue to hold in our portfolio. Now, fourth is a very important attribute called quality of management. Now, people are talk. we uh, judge the quality of management by two things, objective and subjective way. Objective way is a capital allocation and capital distribution. Now, uh, you know, let me make this discussion lighter. You know, I was reading a Peter Lynch book and you know, he said that you should have as many kids you can manage. And he connects this to business. Now, why does he say? He says the company promoter or CEO has his core competency in one line of industry and business. And as soon as he tries to focus, and just like a crying baby will get the attention, the not so good business will get the attention out there. And one of the examples that comes to my mind immediately is Vijay Malia inherited the brilliant United Breweries business. But he started to focus on you know, the airline business and the sports business. And today he's lost his you know, stake in the original company there. So we say conglomerate complexity leads to lesser value creation. We like focused businesses and that focused businesses create long period of wealth. I go back to you know, the study which the book by Bharat Bhai had done in complexity of market, uh, the, this one, is Wipro and Infosys both delivered 25% earnings growth. But Wipro is stock price only 10% and uh, Infosys stock price moving in 19%. Wipro realized, the management realized that it had a complex conglomerate, which is a lighting business was there, an FMCG business was there. As soon as it you know, you know, released that and moved into separate businesses, Wipro and Infosys started to grow over the last decade very, very well. That's important. In terms of subjectivity, it's very important. And again, the board experience comes there, Bharat Bhai, Pratik, Samir Bhai, Sunil's experience comes in there because they have met the management for the last three decades. Okay, And therefore, you can judge the, uh, the corporate governance, the ethics, the integrity, the vision, uh, the execution capabilities of management over a longer period of time. If I keep meeting you and understand, I do that. And therefore, I would say the wisdom really helps us do. And the last attribute is what I call is the margin of safety. Uh, according to us, price is a servant and value is a master. But investing is pricing the value uh, rather than valuing the price. Unfortunately, uh, let's, let's put it simpler out there. Investors at most time time focus on the price to earnings, price to book uh, of the stock. And I would say that's why most of the Indians don't have very high quality in the portfolio. So remember, I think, again, I'm picking up from Bharat Bhai's book, what he beautifully said, price is equal to value plus or minus the noise in the market. It depends on the noise kitna hai, and that is where in terms of price will converge. But in the longer run, price is equal to value. And that is something when you understand, and if you understand the value, I think you will be able to do that. I'll just you know, uh, finish this very quickly. The third P, you know, after the people philosophy, the third P is the process, and which we touched upon earlier. I must say we are the only portfolio manager in the country who have transparently shared the entire investment process and stock filtration criteria uh, with our partners and customers. By doing this, we have made ourselves accountable to all the stakeholders. Now, investors should check two things, which you rightly said earlier. First, if there's a transparency investment process, and second, whether the uh, portfolio manager is uh, actually executing that, means his portfolio holdings follow what he's saying, rather than doing differently, because that's very important. 
And there, within this also process, I would say there are uh, you know four or five things which you should know. We follow in our process 20 to 25 stocks in each of the portfolio, and which is very different from anybody in the market. So at the concept level, we have 5% weight. Uh, that's point number one. Second, a 5% stock, when it becomes 8%, we will trim off the 3% and bring it down to 5 and the 3% will get allocated to other 19 stocks, which means we are focused on the risk management of the portfolio. Third in the process, we invest the client's money in 30 days. Whenever you give us money, we will take about, you know, uh, in the first week, we'll build about 20-30% of the portfolio and the balance 60 to 70 percent will build in the three to four weeks. But the client always asks me, what if I give you one quote, will you invest immediately or will you invest later? Uh, the fourth, we believe cash is a source of risk. So across the 20 years of investment, we never had cash in the portfolio. All the returns I'm talked about, growth or IP portfolio, is having 100 percent invested, and that is in terms of there. And lastly, the investor should know that we were the first to launch STP in this country uh, in the PMS format about four years back. So even if the client is you know, edgy or nervous about the environment today, he can give us about a crore or 50 lakhs and we can deploy that money over in terms of uh, the next five to six months or 10 months we want to do that. So that's in terms of the core. The fourth piece of product, and I'll just you know take a minute to f- uh, close this here. Product should be simple and understandable investor. It should not be really complex and the investor should be able to relate. And uh, I would request investor to stay away from any complicated investor idea. But if there's a good people, good philosophy, good in terms of there, you will see a very standard, simple kind of products. Lastly, the fifth P is the performance. Now, uh, I believe performance is the effect. The other five, four Ps are causes. So as an investor, you should always look at the four Ps because you cannot focus on the performance at all. Okay, but if your four Ps are right, the performance will be uh, will fall into place. But if just suppose you want to evaluate performance independently, then evaluate performance on, I would say, a couple of parameters. First, consistency of performance, which somewhere gets missed out. People get very carried away by last one year returns or last six month returns, which should not be there. Second, volatility. Okay. How much in terms of beta, sharp, and in up capture, down capture ratio, uh, all of that. And third, risk adjusted. What has been the risk in the portfolio uh, in terms of stock and sector across there? So I would sum up by saying that if the four Ps are right, 10 out of 10 times, uh, investors will get and achieve their investment objective over a longer period of time, uh, and the performance will fall into place if the four Ps are right. Sorry, I think it was a long one, but I thought, you know, as investors, your investors who are not an expert to ASK, I think should understand the ASK, uh, the five Ps and philosophy quite well. Thank you so much for highlighting every small point, and I think it was equally important for our investors to know about you know what kind of investment philosophy is followed by your your investment team. So uh, uh, other thing, Dimesh, is that you know you manage at ASK, you manage the largest PMS portfolio, which is your IEP, and this also delivered very consistently more than you know nineteen and a half twenty percent CAGR for almost eleven long years. Uh, so uh, one of the thing is, uh, uh, I, and I keep getting this question from some of our investors. Do you think that size is an issue now because the portfolio is very big and you think that this decade would be uh, similar to uh, the previous decade in terms of performance? So, uh, no, the question is real, but let me uh, address this. Uh, IP as a size, uh, and this question I have answered it so many times. When IP as a, a size first became 3,000 crores, I answered that. Then it became 5,000 crores, then 7,500 crores, then 10,000 crores. But every time it goes to a newer level, uh, uh, the investors start to believe that it is a size which is a deterrent. Okay, so let me try and address this um, uh, question by a uh, live. Uh, it is, you know, IP is not a challenge for us internally because of the way we manage it as a process. And I'll explain with some of the live data points for you. Uh, as you rightly said, and we as an organization are proud that IP is the single largest strategy in the country with now close to 18,000 crores of assets. Okay. Uh, and now let me go back to process, which I highlight. Now, in the process, I shared with you that we buy about 20 to 25 companies with almost equal weight of 5%. And then we trim down when it comes to 8% or to 5% out there. So let's say, you know, uh, uh, the 5% of the stock, which is 18,000, uh, 5% is about 900 crores. And I inv- we invest the 900 crores into buying Bajaj Finance and selling Bajaj Finance single day. Will there any be an uh, you know, impact to a Bajaj Finance stock auto return? 
Will there be impact to Asian pains to uh, cross at all out there? Will there be impact to, you know, almost I can go to each and every stock and, you know, try and tell you that because what has happened is along with the size, the growth of the IP portfolio, the underlying liquidity of the stocks has gone up. Like the first time when we bought Bajaj Finance in 2014, the market cap was about roughly 9,000 crores. Today, the market cap is a little more than three and a half lakh thousand crores. And that is where, uh, in terms of, I say that uh, the liquidity of the underlying stock has gone up along with the size and the process women. Second, I would say is very different. And I want to highlight a unique structure, which only ASKM, I, as you said, I've worked with many organizations, but ASKM is a unique structure. Where is the risk manager uh, in our organization who does not report into the investment team, who reports into board straight away? And what is the risk manager's role? His role is to continuously measure and track the stock weighted, sector weighted, and liquidity of the portfolio. So as soon as in terms of the stock or the you know sectoral weightage comes to a, a level of you know trimming, he will bring alert to the investment team and to the board that it's time to do that. And this is where I would say a strong discipline comes into uh, our investing and a rational way. So you don't get emotionally carried away by holding on to you know a very high weighted into a single stock. Now this is about a past, and let me say in the future, you know, because I, as I, I told you, I answer this question every level of IP. Let's say the uh, market, our IP portfolio, and I would wish that it becomes a thirty thousand crore, and we manage twenty companies. Again, I would say just divide that uh, twenty by uh, thirty thousand crores. It's about fifteen hundred crores of investment into a single stock. And again, if you go back to uh, any single stock which you have, because you know we continuously manage the liquidity by the risk manager and do there. Uh, there's a difference between managing in PMS and mutual fund. In PMS, I can sell in a uh, in a demand account of a client and move out there. But size becomes a deterrent in a mutual fund platform because then I have to sell all together. If Vikas as a client sells five crores, I go to his account, sell five crores and come out without disturbing the entire liquidity or the portfolio of the other clients. And that's something which the client has to understand. Uh, and what we can also do, we have thought through, so we are cognizant of the fact that we have fiduciary responsibility to managing clients' money. We are cognizant of the fact that what we can do is that we may increase the stocks by a two or three. So instead of 20, we may own 22 or 24 stocks in the portfolio to maintain overall board liquidity, but ensuring that we don't hurt returns. And we've done this continuously over the last 10 years, and I'm happy to share since inception, IP has delivered 19.6, I'm rounding up to 20%, Versus about you know roughly about eleven percent for the BSC five hundred or Nifty for the same period, and even for the last one year because last one year is critical. You may say that on the size was lower. I would say when last one year, I would say at the time of COVID, uh, the size of the portfolio was about fourteen thousand crores or thirteen thousand crores or roughly, which means the single largest strategy. From that day till today, if you measure in the last one year, when the BSC five hundred has done about fifty fifty one percent, IP has done fifty eight percent. So that should assure that our clients, our investor, that it is a process level approach which we have. And this size is never a deterrent, is the way we manage. And in the PMS, in terms of, uh, is to be not compared with the mutual fund because of the, uh, the difference I mentioned out there. So I'll stop here then. Hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, well said. I think the way uh, the market cap of the underlying securities are going up, Obviously, it does not become an issue out there. Uh, not at all. I mean, no question about it. So the other question is, off it we have also, I was just looking at the data points other day, Nimesh, and uh, I was uh, observing that your other portfolio, which is your EOP, uh, has also, I mean, the investor community has all started realizing and witnessing that it has also shown good amount of improvement in terms of performance. Yeah. Now, why am I asking this question is the reason behind it. Because on the one side, you have IP, which is your multi-cap portfolio consistently doing well. On the other side, there are some mid and small cap companies which are participating in this rally and they are also doing well. So this question I keep getting from my investor, where should I go for? Or what should I do? Sure. Okay. Sure. So uh, yes, your observation is uh, again spot on because EOP is again a flexi-cap or a multi-cap portfolio, but there's a bias to mid-caps out there. Uh, one of the reasons that there has been slightly better performance than most of the portfolios because we have a good play on uh, specialty chemicals, uh, HFCs, NBFCs. Uh, we have a couple of digital and a new age technology companies inside there. And there's a very good representation of building product, pipes, 
and manufacturing companies, which has led to you know some bit of outperformance than maybe IP or some of the core portfolio in the shorter term. Now, I think the question from your uh, investor point of view, what's the future and how should one look at it? So let me first touch upon EOP and then maybe in terms of talk about. Talking about the future, uh, we believe that, uh, yes, uh, there's a bias to mid-caps in this portfolio because we believe mid-cap will tend to outperform uh, in a stable and a continuous high-growing GDP environment. And we believe India over the next decade will be a, you know, uh, uh, will have a continuous high GDP year on year to do that. Second, I think due to the short-term impact of uh, the kind of government policies, including GST, IBC, you know, risk aversion due to COVID, and then there's a Trump and China at loggerheads. What we had seen there was in terms of you know contraction of uh, earnings growth, and the large cap did very well. In recent times, what you said, mid caps have caught up, and it has now you know gone beyond the uh, the 2018 high. But there's a still a lot of gap between the mid and large cap by it almost uh, you know six to seven percent time, and we believe this is set to change in the next couple of years. And you're going to see a broad based rally coming in the country, uh, and that is where I would say we have a bias. Now let us take to uh, you know uh, uh, this couple of the reasons that what is the thought of a house uh, and why do you think which is uh, you know this sector has done well or will continue to do well. First, I think the PLI scheme launched by this government has been one of the finest we have seen by any government to boost the manufacturing sector in the country. Second, I think the uh, COVID has given a rude shock to the global you know, uh, companies, the manufacturers, that they just cannot depend on uh, one China as a country. Uh, and India is emerging as a reliable manufacturing and supply chain hub in the country. Now, wh who are the beneficiaries of this? Uh, you know, these two ideas which we have broadly out there? Uh, and if you look at some of the sectors, this sectors by itself are a small or mid cap. And uh, let's evaluate some of the sectors. So, you know, I was evaluating for EOP. The If you look at the average market cap, all the listed companies, the 100 plus listed company, chemical company in the country, the average market cap is about roughly uh, 10,000 crores, which is in terms of small cap category. As a sector itself is a small cap. And, you know, if only 1%, we currently are only about 4% uh, of the kind of uh, exports of chemicals, and if only 1% keeps shifting every single year from China to India, I think we'll see double digit growth in you know, this sector. Second, in terms of average market cap of the listed companies, or uh, manufacturing companies on the consumer durable or consumer electronics, the average market cap is roughly on a 16 to 18 down crores only. Again, they will qualify a small and mid cap category and look at it in terms of the opportunity in the consumption sector, or manufacturing sectors are there. Third, the digital and niche technologies will have a you know, very, very you know, uh, important role uh, as we move forward, and some of them were listed only last two couple of years, the average market cap of the entire sector itself is 13,000 crores. So we believe some of these sectors, which has been beneficiary of you know the COVID, which is the beneficiary of the, the China plus one story started a couple of years back. It only accentuated due to COVID. Then the PLI scheme. So there'll be this beneficiary of export beneficiary, along with, as I mentioned to you, the HFCs, the NBFCs, the insurances of the world, the chemicals and pharmaceutical. We believe this will lead to a high earnings growth of 20 plus percentage as we move forward. And uh, you know, we can only focus on the earnings. We believe that there will be a catch up of uh, you know, uh, the price in the portfolio uh, if the earnings grew well. And our expectations is there we should do about 20 to 23 percent earnings in the next three years for this portfolio. Last, uh, but very importantly, your clients would like to consider that we have filed an emerging opportunities fund with SEBI a couple of months back, which is very similar to what we are doing on EOP portfolio, uh, a same of FlexiCap portfolio with a bias to uh, in the mid cap. And we should get this approval of SEBI uh, from SEBI anytime this month. And you may want to consider. Uh, so, uh, and I'll just, one thing again, I tell you, which, you know, for your uh, investor interest, the median market cap of EOP portfolio EO, uh, uh, F is about 27,000 crores. And IEP, the average median market cap was uh, almost the same in 2014. And you've seen what has happened there. Uh, when we bought, you know, Bajaj Finance, I told you 9,000 crores. When we bought PI Industries, the market cap of PI Industry in IEP portfolio is 1,500 crores. The Astral Poly was roughly about, you know, really small, 1,000 to you know, 2,000 crores are there. Today, they have jumped to 40, 50,000 crores. And I can only say that uh, in this next decade of journey, we believe some of these companies, some of these opportunities will play a significant role uh, in uh, the wealth creation of the company. 
And therefore, uh, I must say that after you have a core portfolio holding maybe IP uh, uh, of the order, then one must consider this uh, portfolio, which can give a little bit of kicker uh, to the uh, long-term uh, portfolio return. All right. So one announcement. Uh, uh, in case you have any questions, uh, participants, so please write your uh, questions in Q and A box, not in the chat box. Q and A box. Uh, okay. So while some of them are typing the question, last question from my end. So Nimesh, uh, uh, what is any any suggestion that you'd like to make to our investors, uh, those who have been investing in equity markets for quite some time? Sure, they are uh, they are very happy to see the performance uh, improving day by day, but. But at the same time, discipline is something which needs to be maintained uh, at all level. And, and we at AIF and PMS Experts India, we keep suggesting and advising our clients that please speak to us. Don't just go and look at complex product, what you rightly said, and just go and invest. You know, Keep talking to us so that we can furnish those data points in terms of looking at the beta level, alpha level, and the history and the track record. So any suggestion for, for our investors? So see, I can share my journey uh, as an investor because uh, I have, you know, closely, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, stayed invested for the last two decades. Uh, I mean, uh, experience in the last two decades. But I can share one of my learning. And after I did CFP, uh, one of the things which I did is that every investment, whether it's a PMS, AI, a stock investment, it was designed for a goal. So I bought, uh, again, and this is an official disclaimer in terms there, that I bought Bajaj Finance in 2014 with a clear view that I will you know, keep this and give it to my daughter as the goal was there for daughter's education 15 years hence. So in terms of 2014, I bought so 2030 odd when my daughter will require to do that. Now, why is very important a goal? I'll explain to you. Uh, I bought it maybe at a roughly about 400 rupees out price. Okay. And I, my expectation was 13 to 15% compounded growth. Now, what happened is in a very short period of time, Bajaj Finance became 100, 1100 rupees. And I was like shocked. I said, what to do? I, what did I do? I said, I don't understand in terms of there. The, the stock price went up to 1100 rupees. Uh, and there was, you know, friends I knew in Bajaj Finance, they told me, bahut ho gaya. you should sell it off. Okay. Now, I'm in a dilemma now. Uh, I came back home. And, you know, I'm trying to sleep, but, you know, I go to left, it's a beach there. I go to right, market jayega, to kya hoga? and I was like, you know, really, a, you know, pain to understand. So I opened my drawing board. I said, what is my objective of investing out there in Bajaj? And I said very clearly, I want 13, 15% return. Will it, am I on track to achieve that? The answer was yes. And uh, therefore, I didn't do any change. And to my surprise, you know, I got a big slap from the market. 1100 rupees stock fell down to 60, 650 rupees in no time. And I was dejected and disappointed, you know, all point. Like, what the hell I have done in life here? God had come down and told me, Nimesh, sell it off, but you know, I didn't sell it across there. Again, it was very difficult to live in. So I lived that moment and, you know, I again went back to drawing board. So why should I worry out there? And from that day till today, the journey has been 6,000 rupees. I have only added it up. And this kind of gyrations of the stock price has continued to happen. And after that first journey of you know, 400 to 1100 and 1100 to 650, it has never deterred me or never occurred to me that I should sell and come out. And having stayed there, and why could I stay longer? Because I had a goal defined. And that objective was goal was there. And therefore, I never focused on what the markets are doing, what's the valuation, what's the cost there. I just kept sticking around with them. So that I would say, and therefore, never trying to time the market. I think investors invariably end up trying to you know, time uh, uh, the stocks too much or the sectors or PMS too much out there. Schedule. And therefore, I would say, and this is a request to every investor who is listening out there, to develop the two Ps. I spoke about the five Ps, now I'm telling the two Ps. The patience and the perseverance. Okay, And that's very, very, very critical. But remember, in terms of when you, have, you know, like every good cricketer or like every good sports person, the good PMS manager can also go through a small patch of, you know, uh, underperformance uh, because, you know, uh, the markets may not recognize or reward the kind of investments they've done in the shorter run. But remember, if you have selected the five Ps properly, and if you combine the the two Ps which I spoke right now, and have a goal based objective, I can suggest to you that. Again, not 10 out of 10 times, you will achieve your goal. And, you know, as a reflection, I meet a lot of clients who had growth portfolio invested from 2003. I would say I haven't met somebody uh, for uh, 2002 also I met in Pedro. 
that client has told me that I have had my daughter's wedding because of the money we have created from growth portfolio. Okay. And that's happened because that guy has followed the concept of fill it, shut it, forget it. You know, Hero Andas was there to there. And therefore, you know, it, it gives me a lot of pride as an organization that one rupee or one crore invested in 2001 today is 45.7 crore. And imagine how much things have gone through in the last 20 years. We have seen, you know, today the debate would come in the interest rate cycle, down cycle, up cycle, inflation cycle, up cycle, down cycle, petrol up, petrol down, crude oil prices there, financial crisis, IT crisis, you know, IT boom and burst, political crisis, economic crisis, RBI crisis, and we've seen everything across there. And I would really urge uh, investors that once you do your homework, and I think AIP and uh, BMS expert team is helping you shortlist that. Once you really have shortlisted that, then develop the patience and perseverance. I promise to you that all of you will achieve your you know, uh, goals and investment objective. Spend time in defining your goals and objectives and spend time in identifying the portfolio manager. That would be from uh, my side, Vikas. Great. So another two Ps, which is very important. You need to develop patience and you know, ultimately pursuance, which, which matters in the long run. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's start the Q&A. So uh, in case you have any questions, please type in the questions in Q&A box. The first question comes is how do you get, how do you not get distracted with the noise in the markets? Yeah, so I just covered briefly uh, in the last, uh, which I said, you know, if you have a goal or objective of investing, which I, and I have my money in the PMS also, okay, that's a very, very clearly defined that what do I want to achieve out there? Uh, uh, that's one way of doing that. And second is to stay away from, uh, it's recorded, but I would stay away from, I will not use the names of the channel, but stay away from watching television and measuring the stocks day in and day out. Because it's it's not uh, uh, something which grows every single day. I mean, results come once in a quarter, okay? Uh, and uh, you should really track your portfolio at max uh, once in a quarter. You should not look at daily. The more you look at daily, you will be tempted to make an action. So as I said, two things, goal defined uh, for each investment and stay away from television, stay away from reading all the kind of information through there. Nothing changes in the short term. The thing is, Nimish, suppose you have 100 rupees, how do you allocate that amongst your uh, basket of products at AST? So I would simply, you know, uh, you know, again, this has been a great learning. You know, uh, sometimes we put too much of emphasis on... Uh, the uh, the thematic and you know the kind of other ideas small cap mid cap is not required core should be very high as high as 60 to 75 percent of the portfolio depending on what's your objective is there you know i must say that when i was early in my uh, career of investing i tried to buy uh, what you asked the question the investor was asked the question i bought the thematic and small cap to begin with in the pmss and i hurt my portfolio very very hard Without building the core, I bought too much of small and guys, I'm risky portfolio. I'm okay to uh, focus on risk. And when 2008 happened, my portfolio collapsed much more than the index collapse happened. So, you know, don't need to really do that. I would say 60, 65, 70% of the portfolio should be core, uh, which could be IP of the portfolio. And then you can, you know, couple with uh, uh, EOPs uh, of the world or uh, FOPs of the world with about 25, 30% of the portfolio. That's be it. You don't need to really, uh, you know, construct three, four, five portfolio, because it doesn't help. Over a same house, there'll be a lot of commodities of stock will happen. And second, in terms of, uh, it doesn't help further diversification. So I would keep that simple, close to 70% core and about 30% of satellite, as I said, IP, EOP combination, or IP, FOP combination. Okay, next question is, what should be the maximum allocation to one sector? Now, uh, are you, is this a question from an individual uh, investor point of view? Or a PM in the PMS. So this is related to investor point of view. I think as an investor, he is asking. Now uh, there is no right and wrong answer to this. Uh, uh, it, it all depends on how well you understand that sector. Okay. Uh, if you understand that sector, if you have a very high conviction across there, you can in terms of. So my, you know, uh, uh, I would be uh, make a confession that my portfolio would have uh, about fifty percent of the portfolio would be BFSI. Within BFS, there'll be insurance, there'll be NBFCs, there'll be banks across put together there. But again, I believe that that's my, uh, I have good understanding in my portfolio uh, of the sector. And therefore, it is there. So it, 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 what works for me will not work for Vikas and will not work for the investor who's spoken across there. So you understand, it, it depends on how well you understand the sector. And after that, if you understand the sector, if you have conviction, I think you can depend on how uh, much you want to go across there. 
30, 40, 50 percent is completely your choice. The next question is, do you simply stay away from cyclics and only focus on structural companies? Yeah, so by design, if you look at that, what I spoke to you about ROC of the portfolio, so you would have never seen in our portfolio. You can take a long period uh, history of our, uh, you know, uh, PMS holdings. They'll be never in terms of, you know, uh, the, all the name, the infrastructure name, the engineering name, the construction names, or the cyclical names, uh, uh, because all of them are very uh, poor return on capital employed. They generally require very high capital efficiency. And because one of the filtration criteria which I spoke to you, that at least a minimum of 20% in IP at 25%, they don't meet that parameter. So if they don't meet the parameter, it automatically gets eliminated. And therefore, that's the reason that we have done lesser mistakes because we have not tried and gone into the cyclicals and trying to do, uh, uh, you know, follow the trends or the fashion which I spoke earlier. Yeah, the next question is, what is the average duration of the holdings that you that you have it in the portfolio? That's See, first. Second is, the same, same again, same another question from same client. When do you decide to sell any stock before time, in case you sell, and any re recent example that you can furnish? Yeah, sure, very much. Uh, a very, very good question. Again, all the questions are pretty good out there, maybe for a knowledgeable investor. Average holding would be about uh, upwards of three, three and a, three and a half uh, years uh, in the portfolio. Now, the important question is, when do you do exit? First uh, is when you realize that the fundamentals of what we thought are not going in line with that. And here I must say that every year we will end up doing one or two mistakes. But the important thing is that when you do the mistakes, we exited uh, in terms of pretty quickly rather than just holding on to it. I can recollect Sun Pharma, Lupin Pharma, uh, Indusind Bank. I remember the last in terms of Indusind Bank, you know, we were at a, roughly in the uh, banking, we are very high weighted in the portfolio. So uh, from Indusind Bank, from our 1,100 rupees, we, we, we realized that something is wrong. We gave two quarters, the quality of uh, credit was going down and we sold it about 900 rupees. It went down to almost like a 300 rupees out there. So that in terms of when fundamentally uh, things go wrong out there. Second, in terms of we get an opportunity uh, in terms of from some other sector, okay? Uh, where we do a trade-off from this sector to other sectors. So, you know, as I spoke to you, a lot of new, new age technology sector has come in. A manufacturing play has started to come in. So, you know, we would try to move. So, in recent times, uh, in the last one year period of time, we have, you know, reduced our weightage or removed some of the consumer-facing names, which are FMCG names, okay? Uh, you know, the Britannias of the world, the Dabas of the world, played a great role till about the pandemic out there. And then we shifted some of these names to our new digital technologies or manufacturing players uh, to be able to do that. Third, also, in terms of exit could be a reason when within the sector, we get an opportunity. Okay, So uh, we find an opportunity where uh, uh, some of the banks, some of the sectors have uh, uh, within the same sector has not done even very well. Okay, So there could be a, a you know, switch between because some uh, uh, stock has run very, very high. And I mean, as late as this month, what we have done is there, and the only time will tell whether it's true or not, we exited from Sri Cement and added Dalmia Cement to our portfolio. Now, this has been done largely where, you know, cement has a good uh, opportunity in the, in the construction in terms of the growth of the India GDP happening out there. Uh, but uh, we have, you know, changed it. So within the same sector, we'll do across the sector, which is uh, intra-sector, inter-sector, and the time when we do a mistake, it's a time we will try and do that. Otherwise, we will continue to hold the stock because I, I, I mean, Asian Paints have been holding for more than a decade, uh, Bajaj Finance for six, seven years, PI Industries for almost for a decade. And there have been many, many names I can tell you, which have been for a very, very long period of time. We've been holding. I remember one of the, uh, you know, quotes, which, which is, I think, uh, written by Charlie Manjar that for not doing anything, you need more skills than Absolutely. to really get into buying cyclics and all that and then you know create nonsense in your portfolio you need conviction to hold a stock and you know uh, it's easier to sell off and i remember even the pandemic period when bajaj finance fell you know there was blood on the street okay and the clients were only reaching out to our neck and we realized that you know uh it was the most easier thing to do shy off you know take it off and do it later but we stuck on to it because of three things again the people in bfl sector three things matters the people the ethics integrity across there the risk management and the balance sheet. We went back and checked all the three. And we said this is temporary downturn and actually to bring in or add uh, some more weightage to the portfolio rather than you know, decrease this. So we didn't add immediately, but we didn't sell it off. And I think that's been some of the reason that uh, our portfolio is doing slightly better than the benchmark because we stuck with some of the high conventional names. So I can't agree. I mean, the, the great monger, uh, uh, which he has said. 
So that's a remarkable job done, Nimesh. We as an organization have a lot of respect for ASK uh, as an investment manager. The kind of conviction that you bring on the table, the kind of clarity that you have all the time as a house. And you never deviate from the process. So these are two, three things which is very, very you know essential for any fund house uh, to maintain that. And then only the consistency in terms of performance comes out. So truly a lot of respect, all I can say. Uh, humbled and uh, happy to participate and talk to you know your team, your investors again if required. Uh, uh, whenever you know, it, it's our job, uh, and I must say that I have done too many mistakes in life, so I would be more than happy to share with the individual as well. And uh, as an organization, I would say we have like you know plethora of wisdom and knowledge, and it'll be our responsibility to pass on everything what we have uh, to the, your investors and all the investors in general. Absolutely. So uh, we, we are running short of time. So with that, uh, we are not taking any questions uh, out here. But if you have any questions, please feel free to write to me at vikas at iipms.com. I'll ensure that I'll get it answered uh, from Nimesh uh, directly to your inbox. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, everyone, for taking the time out from your busy schedule and joining in. And I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Nimesh Ji for taking the time out from his busy schedule and joining in answering all the questions so patiently. So thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. See you all. Thank you. I trust all of you.